Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers use of force, officer commands, and resisting arrest, and is brought to us by Josh Sood's Instagram page. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. We all know Surfshark is a premier VPN service that offers its users security, privacy, and peace of mind at a fraction of the price of competing brands. But did you know that a Surfshark subscription also allows its users to bypass region restrictions on popular platforms like YouTube and Netflix and view content that is not normally available in your country? Thanks to Surfshark, I can still catch my favorite Marvel movies even though they were removed from the US Netflix catalog. A Surfshark subscription is totally unlimited, which means that you can use it on as many devices as you like. Like, and even on all of them at once. No other VPN service offers that much accessibility. Right now, Surfshark is offering the ATA community an 83% discount with an additional three months completely free. With 24-hour customer service and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So click the link in the description to claim your exclusive offer now. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. Sometime around June 3rd, 2020, California resident Josh Sood was stopped in the Santa Clarita Valley area by Deputy Andy Stowers of the Santa Clarita Sheriff's Station for speeding. Go three to my location. So I was pulled over for speeding and you're threatening to pepper spray me? I'm sorry? You're, you pulled me over for speeding and now you're threatening to pepper spray me because I'm not cooperating. You can write me a speeding ticket and then you can go on your way but you're threatening to drag me out of my car and pepper spray me. Now, I need you want to, to elaborate? You to your car uh -huh. for, for my safety. Why is that? Because I don't know what's going on with you, okay? No. So <laughs> You pulled me over for speeding. All right. Ready? Are you ready? Okay. What's your name? Deputy Stowers. Stowers, perfect. Yeah. You're going to be popular for this, man. going allegedly 60 in the 55 and you're going to pepper spray me because it's you're afraid so. for your life? I, I don't, I don't, you're not acting normal. Most people no, I'm frustrated because stuff. you were just tailgating me to pull me over. I was going 50 miles an hour. I, you, you were going 60 to catch up with me. I was going 50, which isn't even illegal. Okay. okay. And now you're put pulling your, your pepper down. spray out. Put your phone down, bro. No, 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 no. Get, dude, down. get off me, man. Right. You have... <laughs> Oh man, it's out. You're so lucky. Dude, that's the universe trying to protect both you of us. You are so lucky. All departments are free to draft their own policies regarding the use of force by their officers. However, there are some legal limitations that departments must adhere to. There are two major Supreme Court decisions which departments must consider when creating policies regarding the use of force. The 1985 case of Tennessee versus Garner held that under the language of the Fourth Amendment, law enforcement officers may not use deadly force to prevent the escape of a suspect unless the officer has probable cause to believe that the suspect poses a significant threat of death or serious physical injury to the officer or others. Prior to this ruling, many departments had drafted policies that allowed officers to use deadly force against fleeing suspects if there was a risk that they would get away. In the 1989 case of Graham versus Connor, the court held that determining the reasonableness of a seizure requires, quote, a careful balancing of the nature and quality of the intrusion on the individual's Fourth Amendment interests against Against the countervailing governmental interests at stake. The Graham case effectively applied a reasonableness standard to the use of force, and dictated that the totality of circumstances must be considered, and each instance of excessive force should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. The court also held that, quote, the reasonableness of a particular use of force must be judged from the perspective of a reasonable officer on the scene, rather than with the 2020 vision of hindsight. Critics of the Graham ruling claim that the framework it created is unjust based on the law large number of high-profile acquittals that have used the case as a defense, and that not allowing hindsight knowledge to be considered in a case propagates the potential for racial biases to weigh on the verdict. Nonetheless, the Graham case remains the basis for which all departments craft their policies regarding the use of force, and the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Station is no exception. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department's force policy defines unreasonable force as, quote, that force that is unnecessary or excessive given the totality of the circumstances presented 
to department members involved in using force. Whether or not Deputy Stowers' decision to use pepper spray to extract Mr. Sood from the vehicle is reasonable is debatable, and we will discuss whether Deputy Stowers had the authority to order Mr. Sood from the vehicle momentarily. No, you. how are you acting like this? We're supposed to be on the same side, man. Listen, I don't know you, but I'm telling you that you are going to go to jail right now because you're not cooperating with law enforcement. You are resisting my orders, so you're going to jail. As soon as my units come, but come you're here, pulling we're me over you for going car. over the speed limit by what five miles per hour? Okay. And you have a taser out. Okay, that's fine. You're going to jail now. You may, you turn this into a huge. No. Okay. How, right, is this, how is this? How is this even wall. grounds keep for a taser being wall. out? Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Are you not going to keep your hands? Why on the are you wall? acting like this? Okay. That's fine, dude. Going sixty and a fifty, and you have a taser out. Mm-hmm. You're not cooperating. You're not cooperating. Are you write me a speeding ticket and leave me alone? That's not how it works, sir. You're escalating the situation your, yourself. Anyone out of a vehicle on a traffic stop by law. You do you have law. suspicion to Supreme pull me court. out of my car? Is there any reason to take me yeah, out of my vehicle? Because you are acting uncooperative, and I don't know why if you're on any <laughs> uncooperative of an or what. So it's fine. In the 1977 Supreme Court case of Pennsylvania versus Mims, the court held that law enforcement officers were within their authority to order a driver out of a detained vehicle and conduct a pat-down search for weapons. The court once again noted that the reasonableness of an officer's actions, quote, depends on a balance between the public interest and the individual's rights to personal security free from arbitrary interference by law officers, and concluded that ordering a driver out of a vehicle was a minimal intrusion into a citizen's Fourth Amendment protections, and was therefore lawful. Justice John Paul Stevens, joined by Justices William Brennan and Thurgood Marshall, filed a separate dissent, arguing that the majority opinion gave too much discretion to police officers, allowing them to search detainees whenever they could invent any basis for concern. The Supreme Court extended the authority of the Mims case in the 1997 case of Maryland v. Wilson, and ruled that officers may also order passengers who are collaterally seized during a traffic stop to remain inside or exit the stopped vehicle. There are many factors which could validate an officer's order to exit a vehicle, such as heavy traffic or a suspect's criminal history. Deputy Stowers is correct that he may order anyone out of a vehicle during a traffic stop, and he does not require a specified suspicion to do so, as Mr. Sood is suggesting. I haven't had a drink in like a year, man. Okay. That's fine. Jesus, dude. Why did you sign up to be a police officer if you're going to harass people? Okay. Hey, you got pepper spray? Huh? You got pepper spray? Mine's empty. Pepper spray? Oh, yeah. All right, bro. You're coming out of the car right now. Sit. Can you explain to this guy set what's happening? Set your phone down. Hey, set your phone down. Get out of the car. I suggest that you get out of the car. Right. I was going, what, okay. 50 miles per hour, hey, and you guys are dragging me out of my I'll car. I'll if you want to. All right. Sergeant's going to be coming Oh, okay. Hey, put your phone down. Put your phone down. You're coming out of the car. We're coming out of the car. So I got units. Did he even right tell here. you why he's pulling me over? Listen, dude. Do you care? That's bad here is to get out of the car. Do you care okay. about why I'm being right pulled now, over? My partner's ordering to get out of the Jesus, car. So dude. All right, get out of the car. dude, you're 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 gonna go to jail for sure now. Okay, put the phone down. You're coming out of the car. The courts regard resisting arrest as a separate charge or crime in addition to other alleged crimes committed by the arrested person. It is possible to be charged, tried, and convicted on this charge alone, without any underlying cause for the original decision to arrest, or even if the original arrest was clearly illegal. However, this was not always the case in the United States. In the 1899 Supreme Court case of Bad Elk v. United States, the court held that an individual had the right to use force to resist an unlawful arrest and was entitled to a jury instruction to that effect. In 1899, a tribal police officer named John Bad Elk shot and killed another tribal police officer who was attempting to arrest Mr. Bad Elk without a warrant on a misdemeanor charge for a crime allegedly committed outside of the presence of the arresting officer. The Supreme Court reversed his conviction, noting that a person had the right to resist an unlawful arrest, and in the case of a death, murder may be reduced to manslaughter. The Supreme Court held the arrest to be unlawful due in part to the lack of a valid warrant. 
Act. Although this case is widely circulated on the internet as a legitimate defense, the Bad Elk case is no longer considered valid case law and has no bearing in the realm of modern jurisprudence. Accordingly, it is never advisable to resist even an unlawful arrest, as it will likely result in the use of force by the arresting officer and the additional charge of resisting. As mentioned many times on this channel, justice is meant to be found inside a courtroom, not on the street and resisting arrest can only serve to escalate the encounter and rob your case of its legitimacy. Mr. Sood's refusal to exit the vehicle does subject him to a resisting arrest charge. California Penal Code 148 states that every person who willfully resists, delays, or obstructs any public officer, peace officer, or an emergency medical technician in the discharge or attempt to discharge any duty of his or her office or employment shall be punished by a fine not exceeding $1,000 or by imprisonment in a county jail not to exceed one year or both. Given that Deputy Stowers does retain the authority to order Mr. Sue to exit the vehicle, it is very likely that he will be charged with resisting. Where's Sergeant? Why are you pulling me out of my car? Huh? Why are you I can pulling me out anyone on a traffic stop that I want to, okay? So do me a favor, put the phone down and come on out of the car. You're, you're going to turn this into going to jail, dude. I can legally take anyone out of their car. Are you guys all just allowing this guy to act like a maniac? In a follow-up video released by Mr. Sood, he states that he eventually complied with the deputy's orders and exited his vehicle. The deputies then placed him into their patrol car while they searched Mr. Sood's vehicle. After finding nothing, the deputies issued Mr. Sood a citation for speeding and allowed him to leave the scene without further incident. Mr. Sood also stated that he never went to court for the speeding ticket, and a few weeks after the encounter, he was contacted by a member of the Misconduct Investigative Branch of the Los Angeles County Police Department, who confirmed that no warrant was issued for Mr. Sood's arrest, and the ticket he received was never entered into the system. In another video on Mr. Sood's Instagram page, he claims that he received another call from a Santa Clarita Sheriff's Department watchman who said that he had received multiple complaints about Deputy Stowers and was investigating his conduct, but Mr. Sood refused to cooperate with the watchman without seeking legal counsel first. Mr. Sood also said that he has begun the process of filing a formal complaint against all of the deputies involved in the encounter, but it is unclear whether he will take legal action beyond that. Overall, Deputy Stowers gets a C, because although his actions were within the bounds of his authority, he exercised poor discretion and failed to follow up on the proper procedures for Mr. Sood's speeding ticket. The path of least resistance is often an uphill battle of members of law enforcement, but officers are expected to have the patience and professionalism necessary to carry out their duties without escalating the encounter. Deputy Stowers' approach was unnecessarily hostile and authoritative, and lacked the common decency that should be afforded to all citizens. If the deputy had addressed Mr. Sood in a non-confrontational manner and actively worked to de-escalate the situation, perhaps Mr. Sood would have been more compelled to follow his orders. Instead of engaging in emotive actions that would effectuate control over Mr. Sood, Deputy Stowers could have made an effort to defuse the situation and relieve Mr. Sood of his apprehensions. There are many roads to the same outcome that were available to the deputy, but he actively chose to take the road of most resistance, and in such a polarized and reactionary environment that does not bode well for his department as a whole. Mr. Sood also gets a C, because although he was speeding, it is difficult to fault him for having apprehensions about Deputy Stowers' conduct. Without the proper legal context or knowledge of relevant jurisprudence, it does appear as though Deputy Stowers' conduct was irrational and illegal. And in a country where scholars study for upwards of up to eight years to gain a deep understanding of the legal process, average citizens cannot be held to the same standards as members of law enforcement. Mr. Sood maintained a calm and collected demeanor throughout the interaction. And although he lacked a fundamental understanding of the legalities at play, he did not actively work to escalate the encounter and pose legitimate questions about Deputy Stowers' conduct. All that said, Mr. Sood was wrong about his legal obligations to exit the vehicle and could have complied with the deputy's orders and challenged the legality of the orders later in the courtroom. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to cover in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.